Hey everybody, how you doing today? I'm alive. Hopefully you're alive still. If you're watching any of the videos that I've made in the past couple of weeks. I had a couple, I had a close call the other day. I almost got ran over when I was working outside here. And uh, I'm here, so I made it. So anyway, I'm glad to, glad to continue to share. So I got this uh, lock door lock actually actuator that just doesn't seem to work I think it's the actuator but I want to go through the process of diagnosing this with you um, so that does nothing when I first uh, started when I this started to fail a while ago where I would just like push on that like a slow grind like that and uh, I want to try to diagnose it with you and see what we come up with so let's get started all right, so the first thing I want to do is just yeah, share. Let's just get familiar with the wiring diagram. So, the what we have here is um, the okay. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you That's okay. Phone? Yeah, I'm all right. All right well, later, we'll chat later. All right. So the the first thing I want to um, just kind of talk about is uh, how the things are laid out. So if we go from here, this is going to be our fuse box right here, all right? And this is when it's underneath the hood. And you'll see position fuse number 51. That's position number 51, which is a 20 amp fuse. That gets power, and it's hot all the time, as it says right here, right? And then that's gonna go uh, out from the white and green wire. And we can look at the power distribution. This is, by the way, this is all data all dash data all data dot all data diy dot com information so you can get an account there and you can see what i'm seeing also but either way right um so we have the lock here right so we have the lock and that goes to ground we have a switch here that's what that is the driver's side door lock which is that right there right and um, this uh, this um, this this is going to be where we're going to start first to look at and see if we can f see if that's true if that's really hot all the time. Then we need to figure out what exactly where is position fifty one, right? So position fifty one looks like this. One second. Okay. So here is position number fifty one. You'll see it right here. This is going to be the um, the box underneath the, the 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 engine. Okay, so we're gonna look for that fuse. It's gonna be a 20 amp fuse, and see if that one's hot with the car being off. It's supposed to be hot all the time. All right. So it looks like that right there is position number 51. What's up? How you doing? Directly, I uh, had to directly ground into the uh, battery itself. And uh, that was what I needed to do to get this to work. So let me go. That's hot. That's hot. Okay, so both sides are good. Okay, so so far we have power to a 20 amp fuse that's working. So let's go and continue down the line and check and see if we get power to the uh, fuse box inside the automobile. Alright, so I'm kind of wrong about the uh, wiring diagram. It doesn't go through the inside uh, fuse box, but it goes right to here. Alright, so we have a Phillips. Alright, so I'm kind of wrong about the uh, wiring diagram. It doesn't go through the inside uh, fuse box, but it goes right to here. Alright, so 
We have a Phillips. I'm going to unscrew from here. Because we're going to test and see if this lock is actually working properly. be able to just kind of, I think it slides, yeah, so it pushes that way, forwards, and it pops out, all right, and then, so right here, there's a clip, just kind of slide it off of the, it goes over the door latch, put it off of there. So that gives us access to this switch so we can test it. All right, so what do we have? We have black in the middle, it's gonna be ground, green and white, and we have a green and yellow it looks like. All right, so we're gonna disconnect this three pin connector. I want to check for continuity. So, Yeah, we're gonna do it. On, uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna do it on, on this. Yeah, because we'll check this to see if this actually works properly. All right, so let me show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so in the oops, sorry, in the uh, lock position, right? Uh, one and two should have continuity. In the unlock position, sorry, unlock position, two and three should have continuity. So this is what the terminal, the connector looks like. You can see it right there. All right, this is what this is supposed to be. All right, so one and two is gonna be uh, on the left side there, and uh, two and three is gonna be on the right side, okay? So let's go ahead and test and see if we have continuity. All right, this is gonna be a little hard, hard to film and test at the same time, but I'll do my best. So what we have, right, is um, in the middle here. I love how that just, okay. So what we know, right, is that the middle is always gonna have, every, everything, both on and off needs to have the middle connected. So we have a little alligator clip for the test to be completed anyway, right? So alligator clip onto the middle, right? Yeah, so you can see the continuity. And we know when we go down, down is for lock, right? So we're gonna touch uh, pin number one and two just to make sure this is it without it being pressed. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to touch one and two without this thing touching the alligator clip. Okay. That's it being depressed. That's with it off. That's with it being depressed, right? That's lock. So we know lock works, right? Let's go to unlock. So unlock is going to be on the other side. So. We're gonna push upwards on this. So, uh, the things we do for the video angle, Jesus, so you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so. Oops. So that's unlock. Open circuit, closed circuit when it's depressed. So we have a functional switch. There's no resistance, okay. So we know this switch is fine, right? Okay, so what do we have left to do? Well, the only thing left to do now is actually check the uh, 
actuator. And that's probably going to be where the problem is. Alright, so this thing is not easy to get off. Wow. Yeah, that, that was not easy. So, I mean, there's like th one, t four clips here. One, two, three, four. And they are like underneath here. So you kind of have to like push them all in at the same time, which is technically not easy to do, you know? Anyway, we're in. So under here, I wonder if this is, I wonder if this is all we need to do to get access to. We gotta like take the whole door panel off, I think. Yeah, because this piece, this plug only contr controls the windows, and there's another one here that just controls the manual on and off for the windows, I think. Yeah. All right, we gotta go a little deeper. On the side to the top. One at the bottom. All right, we got three Phillips. One in here. So you can see like here, here, and here. So we got uh, all those three screws out. So we just kind of like pull from underneath. I want to take this off too, actually. Yeah, pop that out.
There's another screw right here. This should be all of the screws. Yeah, that's, that's... Yeah, didn't you almost get hit when that bull crashed and all that shit? Yeah, man, that was me. Whatever happened? Like, did they lock them all up? Like, what happened? I mean, definitely got a felony. Try to hit and run. It was the, the guy had the driver, the owner of that car had insurance. Oh, so as long as the car is insured, it's good, right? It's uh, not so not so easy because it was he wasn't the driver that owned the car. That sucks. That was his whomever. You know what I mean? Almost died, like. Yeah, almost died, man. That's crazy. It wasn't cool. <laughs> Yo, dude, I just like my whole mind was like fucked up for like days, man. You know what I mean? Did you hear him coming? Yep. So that's why you got out of the way. Yep. Thank God. Thank God. I heard him coming. He was just hitting shit left and right back there. Yeah, he was. Probably high as shit. He was. He was high as fuck. Thanks for asking, man. Yeah. All right. All right, so it looks like we got a get in a wire on the speaker back here. That was my neighbor checking in there. You can tell I wasn't, I'm not making it up when the sound almost died out here. Okay, all right. So uh, we're gonna we need to unclip this speaker wire without breaking it. Uh, okay, so it's on the sides. You gotta pull out. Okay. So get a little close up of the switch itself. So you gotta squeeze it in like that for the speaker. And then you can slide it right off. So it's on the side squeeze. So I had some doubts that this was actually the, uh, the door lock module just because it was where it was physically located. So I just put the door controller back on. You can see I can control the windows with this, right? Yeah, I probably can't see. Windows move, right? If I disconnect this, windows don't move. So that's not the door control lock. That's not the, uh, the lock actuator. But I do think I found something though. Um, this here, this blue box. I was trying to figure out if that's like a control module. I think that's what that is. So let me go ahead and try to find the actual door lock actuator connector, which might actually be right here. Duh, oh, so silly. Duh, that'd be it. Yeah, that makes more sense. I don't say that got cut, like, like that kind of got hot. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Looks like it just burned up or something, I don't know. Things got a little toasty. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Or not, this looks like a grease, but no, it looks like it did get hot. You can see it all right here. Hmm, it's interesting. All right, so I want you to listen, because I can't really show you too much. You can hear the lock actuator actually function, but it's like, I don't know if it has the capacity to open and close the door because of the uh, how much voltage I have. This is a 9 volt battery I have connected to this. Wait. Now the bottom two pins, like the pin at the bottom, and the one right above it, right? So you put negative to... Uh... All right, let me explain. Okay, so this pin here, right? On the uh, terminal side, the male side, is what we are, is what we're trying to work with. And we're trying to conduct this test here at the bottom, where we uh, connect negative to the two and positive to the one pin right there to see if, that's pin one and two, to see if the actual door will open and close, will lock. And then if we do the opposite, negative to pin number one and positive to pin number two, we should get an unlock action. So that's what we're trying to do right now with the battery. All right, so this is gonna be a little hard to show you, but I want you to listen, all right? So. You can hear the uh, lock actuator uh, move. Alright, so just listen, 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 listen. So I'm gonna put my uh, negative onto pin number one, positive on pin number two. Okay, that's moving. Okay, we'll switch it. Positive on pin number two. You hear, the, you hear the actuator functioning, right? Look, okay, my issue is, I don't know if it has enough, if my, my nine volt battery is enough to like make it actually go up and down. The lock doesn't seem to be moving much. Yeah, all right. All right, so I try to do a little test here. So I got my multimeter set up and grounded out to the body. Put that right there. That's going to be connected to here. All right, so I put the uh, lock back on, just plugged it in. It doesn't matter whether it's plugged in or not. I'm still getting the same output. I back probe this, uh, more like front probe, I suppose. This white and red wire, All right? So look at the wiring diagram here. You can see that when, if I push lock, right, then if I follow this all the way around, right, and I go to lock, um, the wire going to the actual uh, door lock actuator, that wire is going to be positive, right? And it's going to be the white and red, so 
That's what that is. White and red. So... That's what that connector should give me. As an output. Yeah. Now I'm not seeing that. You know. I'm getting this actuating thing like that. I'm unsure unsure what that means right now, so yeah. Let's um I don't know. Let's think about it for a little bit. Right, so I switched my multimeter to uh, DC volts, and you can see here I'm getting 10.8 um, volts. Same setup, nothing's changed. Now, I shouldn't have any voltage being sent to the actuator because it's not, not in use. So, that's the one thing that doesn't make any sense, right? The next thing that doesn't make sense is uh, nothing changes when I, uh, when I hit lock or lock or unlock so all right need more data all right so I'm kind of back probing both of these here you can see like that so what should happen is uh, this green this top green and white one here when I hit the lock I should get a closed circuit which is what I get here Closed circuit. See? Okay, so that's what that is, right? If I go unlock, nothing should happen. Here's lock. Okay, lock is completely closed. I go unlock. I get some fluctuation in the resistance, right? So. Let's switch this around. All right, so I got this switched right where the uh, the bottom wire, the green and yellow, when I activate the unlock, which is up like that, that should give me a closed circuit. So you can see that's what's happening right now. Closed circuit. Okay. So we know that the switch pushes information from, it's, it's like we're double checking the switch. We know that we checked it earlier today, but we just wanted to make sure that, I wanted to make sure it's getting output from the back of the wires. So let's, uh, let's see where that goes. <sighs> anyway, here we go. Hopefully this was not going to be so painful. All right, the uh, connector here, right? I got the blue and this is a blue and uh, I don't know. It looks like a blue and red. Yeah, blue and red wire right here. So I got that back probed and the ground back probed and uh, the continuity is open the whole time. So even when I hit the switch to go to unlock, nothing changes. Lock, nothing changes. Well, lock shouldn't change because the blue and white's for the unlock. So something's creating an open circuit consistently. That's what I'm seeing right now. That doesn't make much sense to me. So. Think about this for a second. All right, so I took uh, this out. This is what's on the diagram that I was like trying to figure out where the heck that was. This says, I couldn't even tell you right here, Dora Lock Control. And that just sits right in here, All right? And that gives me input and output. Now I wanted to make sure that uh, this is the right thing, right? So I put my multimeter in continuity, which is that set in right there. I'm gonna check and see if that green and white wire here is the exact same green and white wire here. This is the wire that 
I'm sorry, this is the pigtail that connects into the um, the lock connects into this back of this, right? This is called uh, the lock door lock control, right? So here we go. Now, so we can kind of get that someplace visible for you. Uh, Alright, so take our multimeter here. We're going to touch the back of this wire and we should see that go to. Yep, full continuity. So that is the same wire. Alright. Okay, so we know we're getting. A good connection from here all the way down. Let's check the other two wires. Other two wires. All right. So here's our green and yellow setup. Right. Well, we're looking for that now. Green and yellow. So probe, front probing it there, and I'm back probing it over here. That's that one. Okay. So take a look here. You'll see that we have continuity. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so here's the last one the black and brown. So we have continuity. All right, so. Okay, this is what we figured out, right? We have no signal come into here. No voltage, no continuity, nothing's changing to the actuator. We tested the actuator, the actuator moves. I don't know if it moves enough, but it does move, right? And uh, when I say move enough, I don't know if it moves enough to go up and down based on the amount of uh, voltage I'm giving it, which is from a nine volt battery, nine volt battery versus a 12, 12 volts, right? Uh, we know that the switch works. That switch works. I mean, sorry, you know, the switch. Uh, this. That works, right? We know that the switch wire coming all the way down into the door lock control works. There's, there's continuity, right? Uh, we are not getting output from the door lock control to here. That's a problem, right? So, <laughs> if, if, I, if I'm thinking about this correctly, right, this is our point of failure. That's it. Yep. That's, that's what I'm thinking right now. All right. Because we have power coming all the way from the battery to, yeah, we have power from the from the car battery coming in, or do we? I think we do. Uh, hmm. Let me think about this for a second. Now let's talk about this a little bit. So I kind of figured out something, right? So we know here that we have a like when f a fuse 50 one, which is a 20 amp fuse, right? This is the under hood fuse box, is the one that gives power to the door control lock unit, right? And this is a white and green wire, and it goes into position number 12 on the back of this connector. This connector, right, that goes to here, right, that connects into this uh, power door lock control unit, right, is this right here. That's that connector. Macro view, micro view. Okay, now we're looking for green and white wire, right? That would be this wire right here. Okay, now let's go back to the, the, the uh, wiring diagram. Sorry. So 
so. This is how you can troubleshoot it, right? But we're not gonna use this. We're gonna use our own thoughts first. So that's our power door lock control unit, right? Which is located right here. I already pulled it out. It's, it's blue. And um, this is the pin. See this 12, this 12 pin connector right here? That's that. That is that. Right, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So that's that's twelve pins. That's this connector. So this connector here, right, has a white and green in position number twelve. So that's position number twelve right here, and there's a white and red on top of it, which is position number five. So we have a white and green right here. Right? And above it should be a white and red. That's not a white and red. Right? So, this is already inconsistent with uh, the wire and diagram. But white, right next to it is a... Sorry. Oh, I'm wrong. Look, I'm totally wrong. Okay. Here's the uh, white and green. This one here. Right? And then above it is the white and red. That is this one here. Right, so this is position number 12 right here at the bottom, and up top is position number five. Okay, that makes sense because you can see the, the cutout part right here that does nothing, cutout part right here does nothing, and then go on that side. We have three at the top, three at the top, one at the bottom. So this is the one we want. So this one should be hot right now because we know that white and green wire comes straight from Q51, which we checked already, which is fine. So let's double hit, let's double check and see if this is hot right now. So ground it out from there. And it's gonna be hard to do this one in. We touch the screen and white right here. Let's look at the test. See we have voltage, battery voltage out there, 12.4. So that's an indicator that we have got power coming in. There's nothing wrong with the circuit, so I'm assuming again we might have just a failed module here. I don't know. Yeah. So I thought about something else, right? See this black wire right here? Number four. Sorry. So that one, right, is ground. And uh, it should be, it should have continuity to the chassis of the uh, vehicle on that connector, which is right here. Number four. All right. Now, that should give us continuity if we ch touch it onto the body of the vehicle. Now here's the thing, right? From, <laughs> yeah, the, the, exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. So here is our port, uh, our diagnostic um, assistance that we can uh, we can use to help uh, figure out what, what's going on right here. So we should have in position four, cavity number four, which is position four, which is that right there. Right? The black wire. This black wire under all conditions, right, should be should have continuity to ground, and the ground location is uh, ground five five one, which is underneath the uh, dash. Now, when I uh, get my multimeter here, Let's see what we've got. okay, so we got a multimeter here, and. I'm gonna check that for continuity. We're, we're doing good. All right. This is the position it's in, in case you need to see. All right. So we got this all set up. We got a alligator clip back there in the door. And I'll like clip that onto the uh, to 
a multimeter. We got a back probe set up right here. And we're gonna just double check, make sure we have continuity. Oops, get that out of the way. There's continuity there. Okay. So this should give us continuity also when we touch it. You can see that, but it's an open circuit, which is not good because the actual door lock control module will never ever have the power or completed circuit that it needs to like do its job. So that might be our problem. I'm unsure, but I'm feeling pretty feeling pretty good about this. Okay, so nothing there. That's what we have. All right, so I want to show you something. The there is a ground point. This is ground point five five one, right? Which we've seen um, in the. Uh... So there you go. So here's our ground points, right? So this is ground point five five one, right here, right? And that's located right here, and it tells you right here that it's. It is 5551 is behind under dash fuse relay. Get the glare out your eye. Can you see that? Yeah, that's the location. So if we go here, right, to this diagram, you'll see it gives you, gives you a little rough idea as to where to find it, right? This here, ground point 551, is right here. That's the, oh, you're gonna need some light. Yeah. Okay, so here you go. Alright, so that right here, see that right there? This is your ground point right here. That's what that's what that is. That, those two wires, ground wires, are what goes out to the actual lock itself, right? So what do we know? We know if we have no ground, we don't have a completed circuit. Got it? Okay. So again. There we go. All right here. That's what. That's what we. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Oops, sorry. Sorry. That's what we're trying to. That's the ground point. Those two lies right there. Okay. What up? What up? What's up? Oh, he's, he he's he got he got to take a break. It's help, it's Sunday, man. I'm just trying to. All right, so I got my uh, alligator clips attached to that ground, right? So I'm gonna check it and see if we got a continuity, right? So we got, we're gonna touch that. All right, there. You can see. Oops, sorry. We got continuity. So we got ground, right? It's a good ground connection, right? Now we're gonna check it up here. Just a double check. Let's see, we got a good ground. I'm lift it up. Put it back down. We got good ground, right? So that ground connector is good. We know that this uh, the the window moves. So look, see? All right. So this here uses the same connector. So I'm gonna let me unplug this so you can see this these wires here. So this, these two wires are both grounds, right? This is what enables and disables. So, so we got zero continent. I'm gonna go ahead and touch this here. To the back of that. So we got a good ground. So we know that ground connector is perfect, right? That means, right, that this, none of these are getting any ground. There's no ground on this black wire here. So I check this. Uh huh. Let's front probe this here. Right. I have no ground. Right. 
Same thing with uh, over here. I've got no ground on this one. This is for the lock actuator. This is for the, uh, the, yeah, no, the, what you call it, the, uh, that's for this, the uh, door lock control module. That's what this is. And this is the switch. This switch has a ground. Yeah, it's the middle wire. And so, go like this. Middle wire, no ground, okay? So, I mean, no continuity. So, that makes sense. The entire system is compromised. So, we gotta find the one wire, ground wire, that feeds all of this, and then we'll, then we'll be able to solve the door locks actually working or not. So, I've got my, uh, Tech set up to try to like search for this wire and see if it, where it breaks. I don't know how successful I'm going to be, but this is what I got, right? So I have I'm front probing the uh, the ground here, right? And I've noticed that when I try to figure out where this goes and ends, I'll show you what I mean. Right? So. Off down here. It's a little bit up there. Definitely is strong right here. And then that drops off right here. And it gets strong again. I'm sorry, right there. Which is the same ground right here. Alright. Okay, so. This looks, this looks suspect to me. Alright. I don't know what that's for. And then... Uh, I'm not sure what's happening back there. But, uh... I go down here... Go over here... Right, just trying to get a feel for what's happening. I hear anything. I hear nothing. Right. So what does that mean? I gotta pull this apart and just check and see what's happening all the way down to there. Alright? So I don't know what's going on here, but this looks suspect. I don't think this looks factory. You know? So I have two wires. Or three wires that go into this and then out to one. Uh, let's pull this apart. Alright, that, that looks good. I mean, the connection there is good. So we need to follow these wires down and see what happens. Alright, so I got the harness peeled back some more. I think I understand this a little bit better. Here's the ground wire here. This goes into here. And then it gets pushed out forwards to this. Alright, but then we have two more ground wires, right? We have a uh, small one here and a thicker one here. Right, so that smaller one goes down to to this, to this actuator, to the lock actuator. Okay, I got it. So that's where that, that one goes to, right? So that means, right, we gotta get... We, <laughs> All right, then I gotta, I gotta make sure... Um, so this wire here is the one I need to follow. This ground right here. So let's see if you can see what I'm saying. Okay, this we know that this small wire goes to the lock actuator. And this this ground here is the one we need to figure out where that comes into because this one grounds everything out. So we gotta follow that wire. So you can kind of like speed up how fast we're gonna solve this problem, right? You know that this stuff doesn't move, so why would it break if it's not moving, right? 
But that moves, right? Because that moves, let's take a look in here. Let's see what I see. So, peel that back. <laughs> Do you see it? Uh, right there. That wire is broken. Broken and a whole bunch of them are like severed. Not severed, but they're on their way out. You know? Come on, shaky cam, shaky cam. All right. So I kind of want to peel it back so you can see. Do you see? All those connectors, wires back there. So that's our issue. We solved that. We solved the problem. Okay, so I want to work on how to depin this, but before we do that, I want to show you something really useful. Um, this is online. Blurry. Okay, someone uploaded this online. It's pin. Oops. It's uh. <laughs> It's C5, five, six. That's the connector. And I'll link to it online so you can see it's on a form. And uh, I double checked it to see if it matched this harness. It's because this was uploaded for someone asking a question about a 96 Civic Coupe. And it happens to be the yeah, Honda didn't change it, so it matches. So I double checked. Remember this wire is loose. This wire is the blue and yellow. So I looked over here for blue and yellow, and that's position number six. All right, so I go here. That's number six right here. So that's going to be, if we look at it, Position number six. Actually, I think it looks it's more accurate this way. Yeah. It's more like this. Oops, sorry. So position number six, pin number six is gonna be right here, which is what's missing. That's the one that's missing in here. And the wire next to it is blue. The wire next to it is blue and orange. We scroll down to position number seven right here. It says blue and orange. So this is accurate. All right, so this one came out and from the harness I took off the car in the junkyard, which is this here. And I try to clean it up a little bit. It's a little, it's still a little dirty, but uh, we're trying to get that pin out. So we gotta, I wanna show you how we're gonna do this, right? So to do this, you wanna get in on top Let's take this green uh, cap off. You can see right here it folds over on that side. So it should, uh, should just kind of flip up it looks like. Oh, there you go. So that just kind of slides into that little pocket right there. I should get that off. Goes on top of the white part here. Right. So we need to loosen this take. We need to lift this white part up here. Otherwise those connectors won't they'll be too stuck. Okay, so that's lifted up. That should help us uh That's all we can do. Yeah, I don't think it goes anymore. All right, so let's say we want to remove one of these. Let's try this, uh, try the wire, the green and black wire. Yeah, 
which is this top one right here. So to get that out, we should just be able to like slide down and so we're gonna go down like this here and then lift upwards or should be able to like push this out actually maybe it's down and then lift upwards like that. Yeah, I think that's up. So push. Yep, that's how, that's how it works. Okay, so that's that. So what's happening is there is like a latch, plastic latch that clamps down like this. So what you want to do is come in like this and then push up like that and then push forwards on this like that to get it to slide out from the back so that's how you do it now we need to do the same thing but before we do that on the other car <laughs> we have a lot of fighting to do so we're gonna have to take off the the fender we're gonna do the fender instead of the door right and then when we want to put this back together obviously you know, I, you can probably use some butt butt joints on this. I think that probably be best. But anyway, you just butt the joint the wires together, heat shrink them, and then uh, slide them back in. Um, let's figure out which one's at the top here. Okay, so most likely. I think that's going to be the top side. Maybe. Uh, let me see. I'll tell you if it clicks or not. See, so that, would, that makes more sense. So it cut out right there. That's at the bottom. That's going to be at the top. So. That didn't work. Okay. Let's try it again. So I'm going bottom in. Yep, that worked. Okay, so that's how that works. That long part at the bottom. Okay, let's go and uh, get this uh, fender off. Slide it forwards.
All right, so at this point, I got everything back together. And before I put the fender and stuff back on, I just want to check and see what we got. Oh, look at that. We got ourselves a functional power. Yep, good. So that was a good repair. All right, I'm right out of sunlight, so this I'm gonna give you some salutations here. Um, hey, thanks for hanging out. If you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. Thumbs up, help me out. Subscription is really important. Other than that, uh, I'll see you in the next video, and I'll keep recording until I run out of sunlight. But I just wanted to say goodbye while we uh, can still see each other and still look into my beautiful eyes. All right, see you next time.